Well, while we're getting set up for this game, I'd like to welcome you all to Awesome Games Done Quick 2014. And if you are enjoying what you see, please get us out there on your social media, <coughs> be it Facebook, Twitter, whatever, with the hashtag ATDQ2014. Because more eyes on the stream means more potential donations, and more potential donations means more money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. We need to see it. Go ahead. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So uh, this is the uh, uh, Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Uh, I'll tell you when to start. Oh, we should have let the intro play out. Go ahead and start. Are you set? All right. Um. This is Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Uh, I've been trying to get this into a GDQ for about two, two and a half years. And I offered it this year, but uh, I it's different. But um, Pokesville here and Realm Scout offered a co-op before I was able to offer it. So I bowed out and let them have it. And then I was asked, or I was told that they didn't they weren't able to play the game. They weren't able to practice it. So I was asked if I wanted it, like back. And I said, yes, please, immediately. And then, yeah, foot straps. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, if you've never heard of this game, but you have heard of Goemon, this is basically the first Goemon game that was released in North America. So, uh, after I, I told Mike, yes, I'll do it, I immediately thought to myself, I haven't played this game in two years. So <laughs> I had to relearn the game in two months. Um, but at the same time, uh, another guy on the forums, Berdini, he decided it was a good time to start working on the game and finding new strats. So he found uh, a lot of cool things. So he's... Uh, changing the route for the game right now. Oops. Mm. Really? Mm -hmm. Alright, so um, he's changing the strats really a lot. Or, the game's really hard to execute, so I'm trying to tell the story and play. It's kind of hard. Um, he changed his strats a lot, and I asked him to look into the uh, pass wrong warping, and it turns out it's very possible and it's very forgiving. Um, so for the past month, I had to learn to control both players uh, so I can perform it, and you can see that I'm controlling the other controller with my toes. <laughs> so that's why I asked for the camera to be dropped down to see my feet. One big thing about the overhead sections of this game, too, is that the game has some interesting depth physics. Uh, he can basically jump and hit enemies that are above him just because the hitbox for his weapon is where the sprite is, not really where it would make sense based on physics. But you can't, but projectiles can't <coughs> hit your shadow, which is odd. All right, now that yeah. I have some downtime, I can finish this story. So I've been learning this game co op, and I came here. Uh, like really, really hoping that I can get someone to play player two for me. But while I was practicing it, uh, I started getting a crowd around me uh, because I was practicing it by myself. I didn't have someone to help me out. So I determined that it was better for the marathon to just play it out the way I've been practicing it. Yeah, and at the item shop you visited before you 
left the first stage, uh, you bought some sandals which uh, increase your movement speed and let you jump uh, farther too to get over longer obstacles. But they only increase your speed on the uh, pseudo 3D maps, they don't increase it on the 2D. You also lose one pair of sandals every time you get hit in one of the uh, overhead sections too, which is not good. Not getting hit is a lot easier in the overhead sections. I wanted that, but it's not going to me. Now, uh, there might be some people almost getting banned in chat. Um, <laughs> because uh, you'll see uh, every time I jump, every time I jump, I do this uh, YMCA kind of motion. And. Uh, people in chat have found a way to do it uh, while I was streaming my practice. They've found a way to recreate it. And I told them, like, they have to do it every single time I jump. <laughs> so, but chat, uh, Twitch chat won't allow that to happen. So they start putting, like, adding spaces in around. He's, he's in, you normally can get a max power weapon by getting two cats, but uh, you really don't want to do that in a speed run just because your uh, your level three weapon has uh, it has a bit it has more recovery time and the hitbox is smaller too. Like if he had the level three weapon, he wouldn't be able to hit the two of the lanterns at the same time. He'd only be hitting the bottom one. Hey guys, since we're going for a bit of a longer game, can we get a couch roll for one get a second, please? I'm, I'm Poexel. I'm Hydrage. I'm Karaoke. Thank you very much. And uh, he's playing the Japanese version just for faster text. I mean, um, it's probably what, like a good 30, 45 seconds or so just one text? Approximately. Now, um, just this conversation alone, uh, going in the English version to the Japanese version, if you play it completely perfectly, uh, just that conversation makes the U.S. version significantly slower, uh, impossible. So, like going from a faster route from a safe route, if the Japanese version played a safe route and the U.S. version played the fastest route, uh, Japanese version will still be faster because yeah. of text. And what do you, when he's talking about fast versus <coughs> safe too, there's a uh, gambling mini game you can play where uh, if you get really, really good RNG luck, you can get a lot of money for free, basically. And every time uh, you throw either coins as Goemon or uh, stars as, I don't know what this guy's name is in the Every Japanese so version, <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> that costs money. So the more money, you, and you need money normally at two points in the game to buy key items to let you enter dungeons. You need 2,000, I guess this is yen in the Japanese version. Yeah, yeah. yen. You basically need a uh, 980 for each item, but uh, they are potentially skippable. This bridge here I call the Pocky and Rocky Bridge. It's, it's, it is very much Pocky. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, nom, 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 <laughs> game nom, mechanics. Um, on the other controller that's at my feet, I am holding the B button at all times, and what that does is it makes text roll go faster. So I can use the controller in my hands to just advance the text instead, rather than doing it all on a single controller. Um, in this stage, there's these robot guys that steal your food, but only Goemon's food. Um, <laughs> they don't steal uh, this guy's food. Those, that was them. For whatever reason, uh, any item that gets stolen when you get hit by an enemy, uh, they don't. They don't steal uh, player twos yeah. for whatever reason. So if he was doing the gambling route, which is not marathon safe at all, he would. He'd be able to skip getting a lot of these uh, bonus rooms that have money in them. Um, I'm pretty much getting to the harder section of the game now, so I won't be talking much from here on out. Just a fair warning. Mm -hmm. well, that's what we're here for. Okay. 
I believe it's every eighth kill he gets, too, that a cat drops, so he just needs to be mindful to uh, not get a, another cat, because then that would give him the uh, worst the worst weapon for speedrunning. Um, on that note, uh, if you are to kill the eighth enemy before the seventh enemy, or if you had six kills and you kill the eighth enemy before, or the eighth enemy before the seventh enemy actually drops its spawn, or drops, drops its drop, then uh, it'll give you the cat on the seventh enemy. So you really have to be mindful not of how many enemies you kill, but in which order you kill them, in which order they're going to be uh, giving their drops out. And I believe there's like a frame perfect jump you can do to get past that set of spikes without stopping. I've only done it once. <laughs> Well, while we've got a little bit of a lull in the commentary, let me remind the folks out there watching that we do have two prizes available for this game. We have a set of Perlers, which is a $5 donation, and we have a Legend of the Mystical Ninja anime, which is also a $5 buy-in. Yeah. So, get your $5 donations in, you are el eligible to win those prizes. So, in, the, in, in this room, he could have turned on the other player in order to actually skip most of this room, but then he would have had to deal with having a second player for a while. And that's <laughs> no. That's um. And uh, the big problem with that is that the other player doesn't have s <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have any sandals. So if he finished the stage, he'd be slowed down. But uh, the stage after this one, uh, yes, yeah. no bombs. Okay. <laughs> he will be doing a second uh, second player trip. I like to call this boss uh, Japanese Mr. Potato Head. Oh, because of the face falls on yeah. yeah, it'll be pretty obvious why in just a second. For every phase of this boss, except the last one, he can get two heads at once, too, if he positions his stars just right as it finishes spawning. Uh, entertainment. I'm bored. I have to wait. <laughs> now the next stage is where I have to use player two and where I get frustrated. <laughs> Essentially. It's called hide rage for a reason. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my name was given to me by my uh, stream viewers because I get frustrated. <laughs> Especially when he plays Super C on his specific cartridge. Yeah, my cartridge sucks. There's an example of Seven giving me the item. I got my launch stick now. Yeah, because getting hit in either overhead or side scrolling makes you drop down a weapon level. And overhead also makes you lose a pair of sandals, which reduces your movement speed. So. I used to go through this stage the normal way, and then Japanese runners found a faster way to go through this stage, um, which involves uh, which involves going oh, going down here. Oops, going down here. There's a little hidden path, but uh, I found a better way. <laughs> It's a lot better. I mean, even the fat Japanese route has some pretty annoying platforming, you know. Too. Yeah, and this is very, very annoying to do, so whoops, I don't need that. Oops. Go over there. Oh, I can't do it, so give me just a moment. Now, get, get over. There we go. There we go. So, what I did is so. I just skipped the entire stage. So, now I'm at the boss. And I need to make sure 
Goemon dies here. So when you touch the boss, you take four damage. If you get hit by a projectile, you only take two. But the goal is to kill him while he's still dying. Because you get that. <laughs> <laughs> now you'll see that Koemon has no HP. <laughs> Zombie. Yeah, so he's not quite dead. <laughs> <coughs> Yet. So uh we'll this, is, this. this is the magic transport machine that the old man has built. Um he's gonna shoot me to my destination. But um, you'll notice uh, as I start landing. That's his Zippo cane, by the way. Yeah, he notices that he shot me in the wrong area. That's why he gives that facial expression. Now, this stage, I have to do a glitch, but it's only possible to do, or the controls have to be done on uh, Goemon's controller. So I'm holding both A and B right now simultaneously. So I can scroll the screen further than it, it's supposed to oh, let That's me. why we couldn't get it to work yesterday. It was the wrong control. Yeah. So, you see I'm like scrolling like way too far now. No, wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have to go single, and then, all right. Mm -hmm. I had to be sure I didn't hit anything. That's why the text scroll was going slow. All right, so this is probably the hardest stage speedrun because monkeys. And, the, and it's monkeys. even worse too in that if you game over that yeah that, you'd have to rebuy the uh, pass and game overing makes you lose all your money so you'd have to play some mini games or something to get the money back also bars. yeah everyone's favorite enemy yeah. ever i'm fond of saying that the first rule of video games is that birds are jerks yeah. all right so because i got hit there i gotta Get that, but watch out for the troll monkey. And then um, there's another troll monkey right here. Yeah. For this first section too, if you actually go along the top route through the screen locks and you have to fight a bunch of uh, guys, but you can just avoid that completely. Okay, I got the cat. <laughs> um, that was definitely not intentional. <laughs> so I was supposed to pick up, click the cat while you jump over. Um, this boss uh, deals a lot of damage no matter what, but also is incredibly laggy. Deals a lot of damage. That's not good. All right, I'm so stuck. <laughs> There's nothing I could have done there because I got trapped. So when you die, uh, all it does is send you back to the beginning. It doesn't yeah, actually... Yeah, unless you picked up one of the checkpoint statues. Yeah, which I didn't pick up because it was out of my way. But I normally don't die. Um, and I foresee no more deaths in this one because I said so. So, while we're going through this again, do you mind if I give some history on this series as a whole? Um, so the Gam this series is called Gambari Goemon in Japan, um, which basically means Go Goemon Go. Um, it started out on arcades and this the Famicom back in Japan. This is the first Super Famicom game for it. There are a total of four. We only got this one in English. Uh, if you've played Mystical Ninja Star and Goemon for the N64 and Goemon's Great Adventure, those are also in this series. And there's also a Game Boy game that we got in English in the series. And there's a whole ton of other Japanese media for this series. PS1, PS2, Game Boy Advance, 
all kinds of games. So it's really popular in Japan, but it's really kind of unknown here with a cult following. I mean, there's a Japanese speedrunner whose name we unfortunately don't know off the top of our heads that uh, pretty much only does Goemon games, and because there's so many more of them in Japan, uh, he's got a lot more to choose from. He came up with a fair number of the strats for this run, too. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah, this is where his eating gets the best of him, though. <laughs> Again, while we've got a bit of a, a lull in the commentary, let me bring up a quick bid option you've got coming up later on for uh, No One Can Stop Mr. Domino. You do get to choose how many dots are on Mr. Domino's back. Uh, currently in the lead with $30 is seven dots. Right behind that with $20 is six dots. We have eight dots on $10 and we have one dot on a penny. So everything is open to bid for there. So if you want to control, so for the yeah, so for this stage you're meant to ride that boat across and a few other things. But uh, if you jump fast enough, you can. I mean, you don't die from falling in the water as you just saw, but you do take damage if you stay in for more than like a second or so. So you just need to keep jumping to avoid taking damage. Uh, where the barrel and the step meet, uh, if you step in that, the game will glitch you out and uh, just drop you to the bottom of the screen for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, I'm gonna be taking an intentional hit before this boss. Yeah, if he wants, to, if he needs to take intentional hits, he wants to do it in the side-scrolling areas to, uh, really? <laughs> so he won't lose, so he won't lose sandals. on certain points where you can stun lock him so he doesn't attack, but he went low and that's the only bad thing he can do to me. This is the uh, all-knowing mirror, and it's going to tell me exactly where the princess is. We haven't really gone over the princess, or no. the story. Um, the the first, through a princess. Yeah, the princess was stolen, or kidnapped, and what happens is uh, I'm sent off on a mission to go save her, but the town I'm starting in is haunted for whatever reason. So after I kill the ghost and free the city from being haunted, uh, the first cat comes out and explains to me that the princess was kidnapped. I'm gonna do this now. And I'll get back to the story in a minute, but I am gonna need some serious time for this. Very serious mini game here. The route that I'm taking, because I skipped an entire stage, uh, I will come up short on money, even after uh, all I'm about to do. So I have to play a mini game, and if I perfect that, no, that's not what I wanted. I guess I'm gonna get another shot at it. This time I'm gonna pick easy, just because. <laughs> um, I'll always come up short, and because that, I have to play a mini game because it is a million times easier to get money from a mini game than it is to farm in this stage or any other stage due to cups and hammers being thrown at you in all directions that home in on you. So 
So now all I gotta do is go through all the hidden passages and I will have enough money to finish the game. As long as I don't get over. You said you weren't gonna die, you are right, I won't die. The reason he needs money here too is to get, I think, like a translator book or something in order to talk to uh, the king the that king. I'm not going to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just take a look at him. And... Yeah, I'm, I'm not even interested in looking at him. So, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to look at, I'm going to go visit the hallway that leads up to his throne, and I'm going to see his throne room or his the foot of his throne, and I'm going to decide I don't want to talk to him after that. Some of these jumps he's doing over the rocks are only possible if you have sandals too, by the way, which is the reason why it's important to not take the hits in the uh, overhead sections. Just let me cut in with one donation here. We have a $350 donation from Rabram. Who says, this donation is to thank you all. It is always a pleasure to see my childhood games broken by runners. Also, thanks to all the commentators for the French Reef stream. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Rabram. While well, we've got another bit of downtime, I'll do another one. We have Din1031 with a $75 donation. I love what you guys are doing, and we thought we should give a small donation to this marathon. We are a small community from Germany, and we can hope we can even support you with the smallest amount of money. Thank you very much. Um, I'm doing a lot of animation cancels. Uh, when I attack with my stick, there's three different ways to do the animation cancel, or four. You can do, uh, yeah, I'm gonna see the foot of the stone, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I just don't feel like talking to him, so. Uh, you can, when you attack, you can hit back, jump, up, or down, um, but you can't. You can only cancel the animation with level three weapon by hitting back. So it makes stuff like that possible. Doing animation cancels. Okay, I won't be talking to the rest of the game now. Well, we do have one uh, one rather personal donation here. Ganbar Hydrage. The Goemon franchise is a personal favorite of mine. It got me interested in Japanese culture at an early age. This game was the first in the series that I played, and I still consider it one of the best. I'm happy to donate during a fantastic game and for a cause of personal importance, as my mother is a cancer survivor and I am at high risk myself. It's too bad a BC Maru isn't really a doctor like the localization for the game would have you believe. And that was from Zargon for $50. I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> we will try. So I got a lot of strats from the Japanese runner that they mentioned earlier. This is like the last lull I'm going to have in the game. So. Uh, I want to thank him for all the work that he's put into the game. But at the same time, I hate you because you do a lot of hard stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have a $15 donation from Alpha Money. I apologize if that's not the way you pronounce it, but that's certainly the way it's spelled. Um, second donation of the marathon. Shout out to all the runners for giving us this entertainment and to prevent cancer for all the hard work that they do. And that's an excellent link into me letting you know why we're here. We are here to benefit the Prevent Cancer Foundation, who... That's a really tough jump. Now we get the Lifesavers boss, as I call him.
Um, when that guy spins around, you can attack him, and you can get the hit animation. Like, it shows a little star, but it doesn't actually hurt him. It's just a little personal thing, because when I was relearning this game, uh, he ended almost all of my attempts. <laughs> so I have to get the extra hit on him. So this, this next section here is the most difficult jump in the whole game. I'll we'll know it when it happens, yeah. <laughs> so I'll probably miss it. You also don't want to duck when you're, I believe, going up slopes in uh, this minecart section. You can fall through and die. Yeah, it's happened to me way too many times. <coughs> it's this jump. So there's... Because I missed that, I can just take the intentional path. Because <laughs> it's right there anyway. But it's a very, very tight jump. If it is consistent, I don't know how to make it consistent. <laughs> Got a $10 donation from Joshams. Love you guys. Keep on saving the world by glitching the hell out of games. Thank you, Joshams. A couple of chuckles. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing needs to be said. Nope. Come on, die. Yeah. You can two. You can two shot that guy with with really good uh, positioning, but you can uh, three shot. It's a lot safer, and more consistent. And it is also possible to kill him in one hit with a coin throw, but you got to be incredibly precise. We saved the princess. Or did we? Yeah. <laughs> no, we just gave her to the demons again. What's my time so far? Uh, 30.48. Ninja Girl rescues us. Is that Ninja Lady in more Goemon games? Um, I think that is Yai, who is playable from like the fourth um, Super Nintendo game on. She usually has green hair though, so it might be like an early version of her or something. She's the one that can turn to the mermaid in the later games. So here's the real king, but I don't like him. <laughs> What that did is it allows me to know the whereabouts of the secret passage, which just happens to be in my cell. Of course. <laughs> so I have to go back where I came from. I have a $10 donation from Prinny, donating for one of my favorite games. Love the Goemon franchise. Regards from Germany. Thank you, Prinny. And while we are on the subject, let me direct you to our alternate language restreams. Um, we have Twitch TV slash Mr. MV for the French stream. We have Twitch.tv slash EXE underscore DE for our German restream. Big shout outs and our thanks to them. So coming up pretty shortly here is a cutscene skip based around uh, just manipulating how the screen scrolls vertically. We changed directions. Yep, so just by controlling how you kind of where the screen is positioned uh, along the vertical scroll, let's see, because, because the, the, the ninja lady talking to you gets triggered based on the vertical uh, scroll lock. I've been having trouble with that uh, cloud jump. Oh, Want to tell them about that glitch that happened last night? Oh yeah, so we were fighting this lantern boss again, and 
we knocked off all his lanterns and went to knock off his head, and we literally knocked his head off, as in his head disappeared, and he wouldn't die. <laughs> That's never happened before. Exactly. So this is like a boss rush here. Yeah. Like all the, like but it's only two bosses, bosses, though. It seems kind of weird for a boss rush to be incomplete like that. I've got a $50 donation from Pulse Effects. The day before Christmas of 2012, my aunt died of cancer unexpectedly. It really opened my eyes to what loss really felt like. I hope this little bit of money can help stop other people from experiencing the pain I felt and during this Mr. Potato Head again. Thank you guys so much for hosting this event. Can't wait for more Japanese games as well. $20 donation from Rob Whitener, and the message is simply dash dash dash. <laughs> so, this next boss has an issue, um, and it's just because it's the Japanese version. There's no trick that makes it happen, but yeah, he's writing nothing. <laughs> he's writing missing number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, because I can't see the head, I'm trying to send the arrows down the background uh, uh, of that uh, trim. And only in the Japanese version. I guess. <laughs> and this is the final boss. Who can't touch you if you just hang out in the uh, corner of the screen, so GG Konami. <laughs> I guess I felt sorry for you after getting through the game. So there's a, one of the rooms, or one of the houses in this game, was removed uh, from the Japanese version to the American version, and it, uh, it was replaced with a guy saying that if you press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, left, right, DA, start, time, then nothing will happen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a Konami thing, but yeah, there you go. Yes, no applause, no applause for <laughs> Now my toe hurts. <laughs> So yeah, um, what he's saying right now is, uh, if if you come any closer, uh, I'll kill the princess. And the fox says, wait a minute, I thought you said you weren't going to hurt the princess and this was just for fun. So it's like, I'm out of here, you're not getting my powers anymore. So now he's just an old, now he's saying, oh, what, without your powers, I'm just an old man with no, with no special things. Oh no, and then so I just go in to beat him up. <laughs> That's essentially what all that text means. So yeah, that's going on. Got one last donation. With a brief cameo by Goemon, or just skip one yeah. of the stages. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, Goemon. One last donation that came in during this game from Christoph Ivar. Thank you for what you are doing. I recently lost my godmother to cancer three weeks ago, and I hope this small donation will help. Thanks again. Thank you, Christoph, and thank we are very sorry for your loss. Every little bit helps. Absolutely. I think that's it for me. Yep. Who's next? Thank you, Hyrich. I think up next we have Rom Scout, don't we? Oh, yeah. The Penguin. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Ume I, I don't know how to pronounce this. Monogatari? Monogatari. Monogatari. Okay, we're going to go ahead and roll a commercial while we uh, transition to the next game. So we will be right back.
and we're back and we Go ahead. Uh, you're ready. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, this is the uh, uh, Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Uh, I'll tell you when to start. I oh, should have let the intro play out. Go ahead and start. Well, while we're getting set up for this game, I'd like to welcome you all to Awesome Games Done Quick 2014. And if you are enjoying what you see, please get us out there on your social media, <coughs> be it Facebook, Twitter, whatever, with the hashtag ATDQ2014. Because more eyes on the stream means more potential donations, and more potential donations means more money for the <laughs> Cancer Foundation. Oh, we need to see it. <laughs> 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 All right, um, this is Legend of Mystical Ninja. Uh, I've been trying to get this into a GDQ for about two, two and a half years. And I offered it this year, but, uh, this TV is different. But, um, Hooksville here and Realm Scout offered a co-op before I was able to offer it. So I bowed out and let them have it. And then I was asked, or I was told that they didn't, they weren't able to play the game. They weren't able to practice it. So I was asked if I wanted it, like back. And I said, yes, please, immediately. And then, yeah, foot straps. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, if you've never heard of this game, but you have heard of Goemon, this is basically the first Goemon game that was released in North America. So, uh, after I, I told Mike, yes, I'll do it, I immediately thought to myself, I haven't played this game in two years. So I had to relearn the game in two months. Um, but at the same time, uh, another guy on the forums, Berdini, he decided it was a good time to start working on the game and finding new strats. So he found uh, a lot of cool things. So he's... Uh, changing the route for the game right now. Oops. Mm. Really? How many All right, so um, he's changing the Thank you. 